a new warning about the threat of a massive supervolcano eruption, like the one under Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. Underneath Yellowstone, that if it erupts in a maximum eruption called Category 8, it could literally tear the guts out of the United States of America. Instead of having 50 states of the Union, we would only have 30 states of the Union. We are due. Forget Yogi Bear. Okay, forget Old Faithful. It's on sitting on top of a sleeping giant. Located in the western reaches of the United States lies a dormant beast, waiting patiently in its slumber. For nearly 70,000 years, it has stirred from time to time, but never fully awakened. Yet, when it finally stirs awake, its power may shake the world like never before. Yellowstone Park, a place renowned for its jaw-dropping attractions, has always buzzed with excitement, drawing hordes of eager visitors. However, in his recent podcast, famous podcaster and commentator Joe Rogan revealed something truly terrifying. You see, Yellowstone National Park sits right atop an active super volcano. Joe Rogan says that there are greater chances that it will erupt very soon. Is this Yellowstone volcano a real danger? Can we survive if it blows its top? Let's uncover the truth about what's happening in the park what terrifying announcements Michio Kaku has made about Yellowstone Park, and what we can do to prevent the catastrophe. Established back in 1872, Yellowstone National Park spans three states, covering a vast area of 3,472 square miles. Drawing in nearly 3 million visitors annually, this remarkable park's awe-inspiring natural beauty captivates people from around the globe. Its renowned attractions include the iconic Old Faithful Geyser, picturesque hiking trails, majestic mountains, and invigorating hot springs. Moreover, the park posts a diverse array of wildlife, with the likes of grizzly bears, moose, elk, beavers, and bighorn sheep, all adding to its allure. However, concealed beneath this outdoor enthusiast paradise lies a natural marvel that potentially poses a threat to the park the Yellowstone Supervolcano. Deep beneath the park's surface lies the Yellowstone Supervolcano, a significant source of granitic magma. The prospect of a full-scale eruption would be catastrophic for those who hold this magnificent landscape dear, as well as for the nearby residents. Throughout history, the magma chamber has witnessed sporadic eruptions, with the most recent one occurring approximately 70,000 years ago at Pitchstone Plateau. While most of Yellowstone's eruptions involve smaller lava flows, it is the possibility of cataclysmic supereruptions that garners the most attention. A supereruption is defined as an eruption with a magnitude of 8 or higher on the Volcano Explosivity Index, accompanied by an ejection of volume at least 1,000 cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles, enough to engulf the entire state of Texas. Even the most significant eruptions witnessed in recent times pale in comparison to the immense power unleashed by these super eruptions. Beneath the park's surface lies a heated region of molten or semi-molten rock, known as magma, serving as the foundation for the Yellowstone supervolcano. As magma flows into the magma chamber, located 6 to 10 kilometers beneath the park, the ground swells, creating a noticeable bulge. However, as the magma cools and solidifies, the ground begins to sink and collapse. Experts in volcanology have been diligently monitoring this geological activity since 1923. They observed a gradual and steady growth between 2004 and 2009, resulting in the ground rising by approximately 25 centimeters. However, in 2010, an unexpected shift occurred and the ground started to recede. Esteemed figures like Michio Kaku speculate whether this recent period of gradual growth may serve as an indication of an impending eruption. Concern arise regarding the potential severity of an eruption should it come to pass. The magnitude of earthquakes that Yellowstone may experience in the future remains a disconcerting question. A vivid reminder of nature's unforgiving power took place on the morning of June 13, 2022, when a rare 500-year flood engulfed Yellowstone. 
Within a mere 24 hours, the park's northern regions were inundated with 7.5 to 9.5 inches of rainfall combined with melting snow. Devastation ensued, with the north entrance road connecting Mammoth Hot Springs, Wyoming, and Gardner, Montana, as well as three sections of the northeast entrance road between Lamar Valley and Cook City's Silver Gate, Montana, bearing the brunt of the disaster. Swift action enabled park authorities to repair the damaged infrastructure, restore power within 48 hours, and initiate recovery efforts, all with the ultimate goal of reopening the park to its cherished visitors. Nine days after the devastating flood, on June 22, 2022, the southern section of the park reopened, making a significant step in the recovery process. As repairs continued throughout the summer, more parts of the roads and backcountry trails gradually became accessible. However, recent underground activity has sparked speculation about the potential seriousness of an upcoming eruption. It is important to note that the volcano's rate of growth has reached unprecedented levels in the last decade. Additionally, Yellowstone experiences a significant number of earthquakes each year, ranging from 1,000 to 3,000. While most of these earthquakes have magnitudes of 3 or lower, making them difficult to notice, they serve as important indicators of the expanding magma chamber beneath the park. Recent instances of increased shaking and audible rumbling in the area may suggest a fresh influx of magma into the reservoir. However, fully comprehending the precise events happening within Yellowstone remains a challenge for geologists, as comprehensive observations are yet to be carried out. Exploring the volcano's ancient history provides some clues, with geological data revealing three massive eruptions in the past 2.1 million years. According to volcanology experts, these eruptions occurred roughly every 600,000 to 800,000 years. The most recent significant event, estimated to have taken place around 640,000 years ago, left evidence scattered across the park and extending over thousands of kilometers in the surrounding region. Large amounts of volcanic ash, magma, gas and debris from each eruption covered a significant portion of the continental United States, reaching as far as Louisiana. After each of these cataclysmic eruptions, the Yellowstone supervolcano collapsed, submerging the surrounding landscape, including trees, mountains, and other natural features, beneath massive calderas, depressions formed by such events. In reality, the Yellowstone caldera and Yellowstone supervolcano refer to the same entity. An eruption forming a caldera in Yellowstone would present an enormous natural hazard. Scientists argue that the most recent eruption in Yellowstone was a thousand times more powerful than the infamous 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, which devastated extensive areas of land in Washington and Oregon, resulting in the loss of 56 lives and countless animals. The previous eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano released a deadly plume of scorching ash, molten rock, and toxic gases, reaching thousands of meters into the sky potentially causing a continent-wide blackout. Swiftly moving currents of blazing dried rock fragments and gases, known as pyroclastic flows, race through the area at astonishing speeds, obliterating everything in their path. The once beautiful scenery transformed into a charred expanse as magma erupted from deep within the Earth. The Yellowstone caldera, with dimensions of approximately 50 kilometers in width and 70 kilometers in length, still retains remnants of the most recent eruption, visible in an area called Lava Creek Tuff, where thick layers of volcanic debris remain. Geologists have uncovered evidence indicating there have been at least 47 super eruptions throughout Earth's history, highlighting the fact that Yellowstone is not the sole supervolcano on our planet. The most recent super eruption occurred approximately 26,000 years ago at Lake Taupo in New Zealand. One particularly noteworthy eruption was the colossal Toba eruption around 74,000 years ago, which was triggered by the movement of tectonic plates. Speculation suggests that this event led to a catastrophic global winter lasting 6 to 10 years, potentially resulting in a significant decline in the human population. While not an absolute rule, historical records suggest that super eruptions tend to happen approximately every 100,000 years. Now, let's consider the potential consequences of a Yellowstone eruption. In the most likely eruption scenario, 
a minor event would involve lava flow and a typical volcanic explosion. Before such an eruption, a localized cluster of earthquakes would likely occur as magma rises to the surface. However, in the case of a much larger super eruption, there would be more noticeable warning signs. According to predictions by Michio Kaku, a renowned physicist, Yellowstone National Park would likely experience substantial earthquake activity before a volcanic eruption. It could take weeks or even months for these earthquakes to create fractures in the rocks above the magma chamber. Now let's imagine the scenario of a super eruption, which is a thousand times more powerful than a typical volcanic eruption. This catastrophic event would involve the ejection of at least 240 cubic miles of material over a period of several weeks or months. The eruption would be characterized by prolonged volcanic activity within the park, but the lava flows would be contained within a roughly 40 km circumference. However, only about one-third of the material expelled would reach the atmosphere. During such an eruption, the primary concern would be volcanic ash, a mixture of shattered rock and glass. This ash would be forcefully expelled several kilometers into the air, spreading throughout the country and causing extensive damage. Scientists have determined that an eruption of this magnitude would create an umbrella-shaped cloud expanding in all directions. This finding surprised researchers, as they had not anticipated the extent of the ash fallout. In the event of a super eruption, the Northern Rockies region could potentially be blanketed in three feet of ash, causing widespread destruction in Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, Montana, and Utah. The Midwest would also feel the impact, with a layer of ash settling a few inches deep, while coastal areas would likely experience less severe effects. The exact distribution of ash would be influenced by the season and prevailing weather conditions. Any of these scenarios would be catastrophic, Although ash and debris may seem harmless, just three or four feet of ash would be sufficient to inflict significant damage on infrastructure, buildings, and transportation systems. Numerous lives would be lost, and air travel would come to a halt. Even a small amount of ash could have fatal consequences for respiratory health, creating perilous driving conditions, and resulting in crop and livestock losses. The entire North American content would bear the brunt of severe repercussions, including the suspension of air travel. Thankfully, scientists have observed that prior earthquake activity in Yellowstone can offer some indication of an impending volcanic eruption. While the park experiences a considerable number of earthquakes annually, they do not compare to the intense tremors that would precede an eruption. In such a scenario, Evacuations would be necessary since it would be evident that both the park and nearby communities would face severe devastation. Although lava flows pose a danger, their impact would be limited to approximately 50 miles within Yellowstone National Park, unlike the wide-ranging effects of volcanic ash. In addition to the immediate hazards, a volcanic eruption of this magnitude would have far-reaching implications for the Earth's climate. The eruption would release sulfur aerosols, which would reflect sunlight back into the atmosphere, resulting in a temperature decrease. This sudden and significant drop in temperature would impact the global climate and have adverse effects on agriculture and crop production. Irrespective of the specific magnitude, a supervolcano eruption, like the one that could potentially occur in Yellowstone, would undoubtedly have profound effects on the planet and its ecosystems. The cataclysmic eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano is an awe-inspiring concept. It is captivating to contemplate the immense power and magnitude that lies beneath the Earth's surface. When this colossal volcano erupts, a series of events are set in motion. The intense heat from the Earth's core causes the molten rock beneath the surface to melt, resulting in a mixture of magma, rocks, vapor, carbon dioxide, and various gases. As pressure builds up, the ground is forced upward, forming a dome-shaped structure and creating fractures along its borders. Over thousands of years, this accumulation of materials and dissolved gases has led to explosive eruptions, causing magma to spread rapidly across the park. If a super eruption were to occur at Yellowstone, the consequences would be devastating. 
The eruption would release a thick layer of molten ash, which could reach up to 10 feet in thickness and spread as far as 1,000 miles away from the park. Tragically, this could result in the loss of as many as 90,000 lives. The magnitude of the disaster would pose significant challenges for rescue operations, similar to the difficulties faced during Iceland's volcanic eruption in 2010, but on a much larger scale. The ash would block all ground entrances, making access difficult, and the dispersal of ash and gases into the atmosphere would severely disrupt air transportation. Looking at historical records, we can see the far-reaching effects of volcanic eruptions. For example, the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in 1991 temporarily reduced Earth's temperature by approximately 1 degree Celsius. Similarly, the Tambora eruption of 1815 caused global cooling, leading to famines in certain regions and widespread crop damage. To grasp the true magnitude of a supervolcanic explosion, we can compare it to the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980. When the eruption spread ash particles worldwide, it pales in comparison to the immense amount of ash and debris generated by the ancient supervolcanic eruptions at Yellowstone. Geological records show that the three massive eruptions responsible for creating Yellowstone National Park's calderas, producing an astonishing volume of nearly 900 cubic miles of debris and ash. However, it is essential to evaluate the likelihood of a super eruption happening at Yellowstone. Currently, there are no clear indications of an imminent eruption. Although there is ongoing seismic activity and ground movements in Yellowstone Park, these occurrences are not uncommon. According to the United States Geological Survey USGS, the probability of a Yellowstone eruption in any given year is a mere 0. 00014, which is lower than the chances of an apocalyptic asteroid collision. However, this estimate is not entirely reliable as there is no certainty about the predictable eruption cycles or when another eruption might occur. While future super eruptions are inevitable, it is uncertain if Yellowstone will experience one. Volcanoes eventually subside as opposing forces the rising heat from below and the relative coldness from the surface act upon the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone. In theory, if the heat from below diminishes, the chamber could freeze, eventually transforming into a solid granite structure. Additionally, it is worth noting that the volcanic hotspot beneath Yellowstone is gradually shifting to the northeast, or more specifically, the North American tectonic plate is moving southwest over the hotspot. Given enough time, the hotspot will move away from Yellowstone's location, potentially leading to the cessation of the supervolcano's activity. While it is possible for another supervolcano to form farther northeast, this would require the hotspot to heat up and melt the crust, a process that could take a million years or more. The concept of a million years is truly difficult for us to comprehend as a relatively young species on Earth. However, Geological processes operate on timescales that surpass human understanding, and our planet has existed for an immensely long time. To prevent a Yellowstone Park volcano eruption, several key measures need to be implemented to mitigate the risk associated with such an event. While the likelihood of an eruption occurring in the near future is considered low, it is crucial to take preventative actions to safeguard human lives and the environment. Continuous monitoring of the Yellowstone volcanic system is of utmost importance. A robust monitoring network should be established, incorporating advanced technologies and methods. This includes the installation of seismometers to detect and analyze seismic activity, which can indicate the movement of magma beneath the surface. Additionally, the deployment of thermal cameras and gas sensors can help identify any abnormal changes in hydrothermal features and gas emissions. Continuous monitoring of ground deformation using satellite-based remote sensing and geodetic measurements can provide valuable data to the behavior of the volcanic system. By closely observing these parameters, scientists can detect any significant deviations from the norm and take necessary action. The establishment of an early warning system is critical to providing timely alerts to park visitors and nearby communities. 
This system would rely on the real-time analysis of data collected through the monitoring networks. In the event of any indication of increased volcanic activity, warnings can be issued to relevant authorities and the public. These warnings should be communicated through multiple channels, including emergency broadcast systems, mobile applications, and local authorities, to ensure that the information reaches as many people as possible. Proper education and preparedness campaigns should also be conducted to inform the public about the potential risks and the necessary action to take in case of an interruption. Close collaboration between scientists, government agencies, and emergency management organizations is essential. Regular communication and data sharing between these stakeholders will help in making informed decisions regarding volcanic monitoring and response strategies. Funding should be allocated to support research and monitoring efforts, as well as the development of advanced technologies for volcano detection and risk assessment. This collaboration will also aid in the coordination of evacuation plans and emergency response procedures, ensuring a well-coordinated and efficient response in the event of an eruption. Another crucial aspect of preventing a Yellowstone Park volcano eruption is the proper management of geothermal resources. Yellowstone National Park contains a significant geothermal reservoir, and the extraction of geothermal energy needs to be carefully regulated. Geothermal wells should be monitored to control pressure and temperature, as uncontrolled extraction can lead to an increase in pressure within the volcanic systems. This pressure buildup can potentially trigger volcanic activity. Implementing strict regulations and best practices for geothermal energy extraction will help maintain a balance and prevent any adverse effects on the underlying volcanic system. Public awareness and education programs play a vital role in preventing volcanic disasters. Efforts should be made to educate residents, visitors, and stakeholders about the potential risks associated with the Yellowstone Park volcano. This includes raising awareness about the signs of volcanic activity, evacuation routes, and emergency protocols. Regular drills and exercises should be conducted to ensure that communities and emergency responders are well prepared to handle a volcanic event effectively. So that seems enough for today's video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment to let us know your thoughts.